an electrode array connected to a pulse generator is surgically implanted over the region of the spinal cord that controls leg muscles. Instead of applying continuous electrical stimulation, the Swiss team developed targeted electrical stimulation that promotes a physiological activation of the spinal cord. This means that trains of electrical pulses are delivered at specific locations which are controlled in real time in order to mimic how the brain normally activates the spinal cord. The timing of the stimulation is controlled in real time to coincide with the intended movements of the legs. Within a few weeks, this Swiss precision allowed hands-free walking in people who had sustained a spinal cord injury more than four years ago. Voluntary leg movements stop as soon as the electrical stimulation is turned off, but resume immediately when the stimulation is switched on again. Over the past 30 years, various research groups have stimulated the spinal cord electrically to restore walking after paraplegia. And after intense rehabilitation, a select few individuals were able to take a few steps, but only with electrical stimulation. And nobody understood why. My team took the time to understand the science behind it, which allowed us to stimulate the spinal cord as the brain would do naturally. And the result was completely unexpected. And after several months of training with electrical stimulation, our three participants were able to activate their previously paralyzed muscles without electrical stimulation. I mean, they could even take a few steps over ground hands-free without any support. For me, seeing this recovery was amazing. A watch that responds uniquely to their own voice allows each participant to switch the stimulation on and off. Wireless technologies control the timing of electrical stimulation in real time, enabling the individuals to walk freely in ecological settings. Three participants were involved in the study, and they are all regaining some autonomy. The next step is to start earlier, just after the injury when the potential of recovery is much larger. We obtain an important proof of principle in, in three individuals, but the challenge for us is to make this a treatment for everyone in the future.